Hi guys, Pepper Brown here once again, and uh, we're going to continue on with our discussion of pentatonics, little things you can do that are more interesting than just playing basic licks. Everybody can play a lot of licks with pentatonics, but there's some other ideas, and a lot of these ideas came from fusion guitarists. Uh, I think probably the first guy that uh, I came across who had some really interesting pentatonic ideas was Joe DiOrio. And Diorio uh, opened my eyes up really huge for what was possible with pentatonic scales. And then, of course, uh, the great Robin Ford. He, he came right along on Joe's coattails with some similar concepts, which I'm going to share with you today. All right, so the first thing is we're going to take our A minor pentatonic scale right here on the fifth fret. Now, you guys should know that. And position two right here. Three. Four right here. So here's one again right here. Down here is position five. Okay, so well, while I still remember, I want to show you this little trick here. If you got two scales together like this, and position two, one of the things that a lot of really hot fusion guitarists like to do is they like to combine both this pattern and this pattern at the same time. What, what I mean is the old 60s and 70s way of doing things like this is not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about these new guys uh, who, who take the pattern and they do a double pattern. So you got this pattern and this pattern. If you play them both at the same time, you get three notes per string, so it's like this. So you double notes. some pretty fast runs because there's three notes per string and and when you have three notes per string automatically that sets you up for uh, doing legato or just hammering them on like this and so a lot of guys will hammer on so you hammer hammer or pull off. So you've got. So you got to be careful when you do this that you don't turn into a weakling on this note. So you got to go, you know, hammer down. So that's the uh, the first pattern is just two, the position one and two together. So you guys can work that as fast as you want. Uh, the next thing you want to do is uh, some really cool shit that Diario showed me is where you take this pattern and then instead of playing three notes like this, you play two notes. And then the next note after that, you play on the next string within the pattern, right? So you're going. It has a very interesting sound to it. And you'd come back with the opposite geometry, so you'd be going. 
instead of hitting this note here, you would hit it on the next string. So you're going. So it adds a duplication, you know. And then the next thing after that, my little twist on it is, uh, what I like, what I like to do is, uh, is combine those two together to make like a little X pattern. So you're going up like this, and then you're coming back like this. Okay, so let's take a closer look at that. Okay, so let's take a little closer look at that. Here's A minor pentatonic here. And position two. And then this pattern. And now divide it up so you got two notes on this string. And then one note on the next string. Coming back, we got this. And then the X pattern of it would be like this. Come back like this. come up with all kinds of crazy weird little ideas based around that it's uh, just have fun with it you know try to come up with something something I went out of the pentatonic scale when I hit that note that's actually the second note of the a minor scale like one two right one two so I like doing the, adding the nine and all that stuff. It's it's, it's it makes it a much more interesting sound. But anyway, so you got this one. So you got these X patterns. And then you could do this. You could instead of, instead of going. Like that, and then the next note on the next string. You can hit the first note on the sixth string. And instead of hitting the second note on the sixth string, and the third note on the fifth string, you could do this. You could go first note, now go to the fifth string. So that's a cool sound. So coming back, you'd be going, instead of going to the next note here, you want to go to the next string, so you go, and then come back up to here. this together to make an X pattern so you and then you could swap strings again uh, instead of going like this you could take that note Instead of playing it on the fifth string, you could come back. A little sloppy there, sorry. I 
I shouldn't have quit drinking that fucking Jack Daniels today. <laughs> sound to us here. Or you could combine them together, so you're going to go... Possibilities there. So that's doing the double pentatonic. And then uh, you can also extend it out so you got three notes, right? You got. And you go, we're doing three notes on two strings, right? So we're going. Now the next step is to go three notes on three strings. So you got. So the sky's the limit, so you can go. The really cool pattern is to do an X pattern with those like this. five patterns of the pentatonic scale. You can go position one here, two here, of course we just did. Don't forget you got position five down here. I think Jeff Beck really likes position five down there because he's always going. the uh, pentatonic here with, with this blue note here See that note right there's a flat five Combine five pattern five and pattern one, so you get and then you got all the patterns where you can go two notes and one note. Now some of those you gotta pivot like that. That's from from the second fret up to the eighth fret. So you gotta you gotta pivot like that. The only guy who can stretch that is Holdsworth, right? And there's a lot of guys who are trying to do that now that are just like probably pulling all their tendons and having to take Vicodin to play Holdsworth chords. It's just amazing. Okay, so we got the pentatonic that way. We got the... 
And then the next thing is, instead of stretching them out like that, go the opposite way, we tighten them up. And uh, we can play pentatonics, you know, straight like this. Now, the thing that I like that uh, both Robin Ford and Joe DiOrio had in their little arsenal of things that they showed me when I was taking lessons from them way back in the late 70s, I guess, was uh, doing the pentatonics in fourths. So that means a fourth is the distance from one string to the next. So you can kind of make a scale of all fourths, except for some intervals are thirds. So you got a fourth, a third, a fourth, a fourth, a fourth, a fourth, a third, a fourth, a fourth. See, so you're just following the outline of the scale. And these notes are right there in that position, right? So you get. Now, uh, the next thing is uh, since the notes are on two different strings, like this, you can alternate picking but a lot of guys uh, who do that pattern will use the pick and your favorite finger your middle finger so you're gonna go pick middle finger like this okay so now let me see if I can get a uh, angle on that Okay, can you guys see that much better? So instead of doing the pick like this. You should pick middle finger like this. Jet Beck looks like that. What I'm doing over here is just this. I'm just going, I'm just doing this. That's the right hand there. So we got. But that's the right hand there. So here we got the, the pick. And you can do it a lot of different ways. That's like scalpel. And you can use pick and finger. Hybrid. So that's the picking angle on that, all right? So let's take a look again back at the other angle. Like this. And then pick and, pick and middle finger. Okay, now that uh, invites itself to play in these boxes. See, these four notes make a box. Come down here. Let's 
So that's that pattern. Good old Robert Ford. Now the next step above that is if you want to go outside, you can include some of those boxes and go up a half step every new string. So that's like a, the late McCoy Tyner. Uh, he played these patterns in his, his piano playing back in the 50s and 60s and 70s. is amazing. But it was like this. Instead of playing a, a pattern like this. Uh, he would take each box and then go up a half step. That's like his trademark little uh, technique is to take those pentatonic boxes and move them up a half step. Every time you play four notes, move the next box up a half step. And then Robin Ford. Okay, so that's fourths. Now that's skipping one string. Now the next thing is fifths. So we want to go fifths. So that's the first two notes. The next two notes are going to be here. You're going to go. Right, so you can do that. But in one position, it's like this. Okay, then uh, from fourth to fifth. Now, the next note is going to be two strings over, so we're going to go like this. So we got this pattern. The next two notes are going to be here, here. McCoy Tyner thing. So we got So then, after that, we've got uh, coming down. Okay, then uh, the next thing was um, Robin Ford gave us a little handout that had three strings involved. So it was like this. So, and you know, he had his lessons really really pretty and written out all the all were notated properly and everything's really beautiful guys really on the ball anyway so we got uh these three strings and of course with the right hand we can go pick two three so we're going like this. And uh, it's reminiscent of some old Rick Derringer and Ronnie Montrose type of licks back in the early 70s, you know. Okay, 
Okay, so that's three, and then of course you got four. <laughs> Let's move into Frank Gambali territory there. And he does his sweeps, you know. Uh, Frank Gambali is the best sweeper alive, I think. No one can come close to Frank Gambali sweep picking, you know. Uh, so people are always asking me, do I do sweep picking? And I go, well, if you give me a broom, I know how to sweep the floor. Okay, so that's using position one. Uh, you got the scale here. You got the, the double position. And you got fourth. And you got fifth. I want to say sixth, but it'd be an augmented six or a flat seven. So say sevens. And then octaves, right? Johnson. Okay, so you could use all the intervals available in the scale as the resource. So you got. stuff you can do to make it sound way different than just you know those good old 60s licks right anyway so then you got uh you got the fourths the fifths the sevenths and the octaves and then you have the we in the previous video we talked about the three note sequences <laughs> four note sequences and they again remember that the four note sequences work well when you do two positions like that. comfortable that way okay so you got the fourth the fifth the octaves and then the three note sequences four note sequences and now I'd like to show you the again the five note sequences so you play five notes and you go to the next note So, uh, back at Berkeley College of Music uh, and Dick Grove, you know, they would they would come up with little sayings, you know, like a Dick Grove was a good guacamole queen, guacamole queen, guacamole queen, guacamole queen. And that, I think, was stolen from a lyric from Frank Zappa. So we got guacamole queen, guacamole queen. <laughs> Now, back at Berkeley College of Music, you know, Boston, uh, you know how Boston people are. Uh, so the, the phrase was commonly, fuck you, fuck you too, fuck you, fuck you too, fuck you, fuck you, fuck you too, fuck you, fuck you too. But then, you know, you can make up whatever you want, you know. My daughters made up uh, guacamole, guacamole queen avocado king. They like to say it that way, whatever. Or just one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. Now, I don't 
remember what the old John McLaughlin Indian uh, conical phrase is. Dakajunita, Dakajunita, something like that. You guys look it up. The conical is a really wild rhythmic art in from India where they teach every teach young boys how to sing in really wild time signatures. And they attach syllables to all the different rhythms, you know, and they're all, it's all from India, so it's pretty wild stuff. Anyway, so that's uh, the pentatonic scale, you know, exploring the little things you can do with it that are just right in front of you. I mean, you got the fourth right here. And you could do these licks like this. And incorporate those in. Or do fifth. That was a Robin Ford one. And then Robin liked to do these uh, scales. So he was a. That's old Yellow Jackets era. It's going up an arpeggio and down another arpeggio. And those are just uh, all the licks that are encompassing, you know, pentatonics and arpeggios. Uh, just using the resources that are right here in the scale, right in front of you. You don't have to really go too far and dig through thousands of books to find these ideas. You know, you've got the scale right here. What can you do with it? Can you go like this? Or can you go across like this? Okay, then uh, there's a whole other realm you can go into where uh, you have to be careful of what key you're in because you're going to use open strings along with it. So if you're in A, the notes in the A minor pentatonic are A, C, and there is no open C string, so there's D, there's E, and there's G. So out of the A minor pentatonic scale, only one note in the scale, that C, doesn't have an open string. However, you can play the note B because that's the nine of the pentatonic scale. You know, like Steve Ray Vaughan. That was like. So that was from like the first intro lick in Texas Flood. That's like. I fucked it up. So that nine uh, is really good for blues if you go to the five chord, right? Because that. You got the one chord G, six, four chord C, five chord G. Now he did this little 
that's a little half step above the root. But, you know, Django Reinhardt used to do that constantly. So, I mean, he probably picked it up from the old, listening to old Django Reinhardt records where you got a note here. So you can't really hear it, right? It's just a little flavor. Anyway, so we've got all these pentatonic scales. So what I was talking about was an A minor. The only note that's not an open string is C, right? But you can use B instead, right? So you can use these open strings like this. Right there, you got four. Open. Here you only got to hit it real briefly, and then here you got it open. Then you got fifths. Lastly, I would like to include uh, those good old Jeff Beck pull-offs where he's going like this. And on that note, you got this. Jeff Beck would love these pull-ups. Old Yardbird stuff. So you got a lot of stuff to work with with pentatonic stuff. You can do the fourth, fifths, open strings. And you can do these extended patterns with open strings like this. That was So I hope that gives you guys some ideas to work with. Just take your pentatonic scale and just target some notes. You're going to hit this one. Okay, what's after that? Anything you want. You can go here. You can go here. You can go here. There's a nice little melody. Four notes, one idea. Or you could go here instead of going starting here. You could start here. So we got. There's a cool idea. I think I'm trying to get across at this point it would be like this guitar that you got in your hands is a melody instrument you make up melodies make up some music you know on the spot just coming up with I mean those those are pretty lousy melodies actually but you know 
uh, my point is that you have this machine here that you can make up melody just with the pentatonic scale. Alright, so that's just a little another little blog on uh, what you can do with some basic ideas with the pentatonic scale. Uh, it's not all just speed playing, you know, always as, as you guys get older and as you grow more into music, uh, melody will become much more important to you guys overall. So try to come up with some melodies, you know, like... Something, just something like that over a groove, you know. And you're on your way, you know, to, to coming up with some music, you know. And, uh, you know, re make the parts up. Make all the different parts up for your guys in your band, and, you know. Everybody come up with some interesting stuff, okay?